need to summarize a bit briefly before we get started. In the previous Woe to You Religion videos, we heard an ancient writer's betrayal of Jesus' introduction to the problem of religion. The writer represents Jesus as saying, religion has seated itself in the chair of Moses. In other words, religion calls upon tradition as its authority by placing itself on the throne of former religious leaders. And the writer goes on, religious leaders burden their followers and make no effort regarding the burden they themselves created. Everything religion does is to be noticed. Religion wants to be revered. Religious leaders wear elaborate clothing. They want to be put on display and honored. Likewise, religious leaders adopt lofty titles. The ancient writer has Jesus saying to religious leaders, don't seek to exalt yourself. One is actually more respected when one is humble. Jesus' followers were reportedly known as people of the way. In his first woe to religion, the ancient writer depicts Jesus as saying that if religion wants to pave the way for people of the way, religious leaders must first be followers of the way themselves. Religion is, after all, an impediment to being in the way. Then the writer has Jesus giving an example of the kind of burden religion places on a follower's shoulder. He accuses religion of being callous. He says religion would devour a widow's house while standing before her, making long lofty and public prayers. The ancient writer continues his portrayal of Jesus' contiguous line of thought by reflecting upon the religious process. He says that religion searches far and wide for adherence. The more religion attracts, the more labor and financial resources religion has to devour. In the process, religion makes many people miserable. In this video, the ancient writer has Jesus continuing his line of thought with religion's blind devotion to stuff, staff, and rituals. Woe to you, blind guides, who say whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, that one is obligated. You fools and blind ones, which is more important, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, that is nothing. But whoever swears by the offering upon it, that one is obligated. You blind ones, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering? Therefore, the one who swears by the altar swears both by the altar and everything on it. And the one who swears by the temple swears both by the temple and by the one who dwells within it. And the one who swears by heaven swears both by the throne of God and the one who sits upon it. Religion willfully creates blindness by the complexity of its arguments. Are we devout to swear by the building or the money that built it? Are we devoted to the offering? or the place where we laid it? Will devotion be to the stuff or the money that brought it? To money or the ritual that brought it? The writer does not have Jesus saying to be devoted to both and, nor to be devoted to either or. He says, be devoted to neither. To be devoted to one is still all the same as being devoted to the other. As a minister, I hear Jesus concluding parishioners can either be loyal to the building and the revered one who stands before them within it, or to the kingdom of heaven, the way. In other words, it's the way or religion. One cannot internalize both. The ancient writer then contrasts the choice between devotion to stuff, staff, and rituals with being devoted to, swear by, the kingdom of heaven. The writer has Jesus addressing what religion neglected. Woe to you, religion, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. The writer has Jesus addressing an ancient religious law of obligation to give 10% to religion. He contrasts the practice of religiously obeying the law and other provisions of the law with neglecting the genuine way. Again, the Jesus metaphor is simple. We swallow religion's glut of stuff, staff, and rituals while filtering out the way to be content in life. Why do we do that?